Hey guys, welcome back. We are playing Ari today. It is a champion that's almost always in a good spot every single meta and she's also very beginner friendly. So you want to be starting with your Q, the one guys, that is your main damaging and wave clear tool. It deals true damage on the way back, so this is what you use to poke people with and also to push out the waves. In the early game, you want to make sure that you are using the auto attacks as well because you actually have pretty decent auto attack range, so make sure that you combine that with your Q. So you can maybe sometimes get a really easy electrocute proc off. Be careful of not spamming your Q though because it does cost a decent amount of mana and you don't really have the biggest mana pool. And that right there was the charm guys, um, of course you can use the E plus flash like I did right there. So what it does is that um, you can stay behind the minion wave and then catch people off guard and it actually works most of the time. Just make sure that they don't have any enemy minions in front of them. And your E also amplifies the damage that they will be taking from your abilities so make sure that you start the combos off with the E first. I just put another point in the Q so we have some bit better way clear but you can also take your W little 3 if you want to. So the W gives you extra damage and it also gives you a temporary burst of movement speed. So we have a really good base right now, we got the Dark Seal of course, we got a kill mid lane and then we also got that um, kill from the one invade. Even though the enemy team got more kills than we did the one, but we got to spend that gold as well so that's perfect. Now hitting that E can be really hard because of course it is a skill shot, your Q is a skill shot as well and so is the E, um, so you have to be really good at predicting how the opponent is going to dodge. A lot of the times when they're running away, you can try to aim the E right behind them, like I did with Elisandro right here because you saw that she tried to si sidestep it, so she ended up walking straight into our E, so that's a way you can use it. But with a build I'm going to show you, the main build on Ari, you'll not be able to miss a single E because you get to root people first and then you get a guaranteed E off, so it makes Ari very reliable. And that sustain on your passive is also really nice. Try to use it with your Q. When that passive is ready, guys, try to use it with your Q on an entire minion way if possible, and you're gonna get a lot of HP back. And Ari is actually really really mobile once you get the uh, level 6 because you get 3 dashes and then of course you also have that burst of movement speed on your W so from level 6 it's very very hard to gank this gem so that also makes it really safe in the lane. You don't always have to worry about the enemy jungler, you don't always have to worry about OX on him because you can always get away. But until you are level 6 then you have to watch out. So now we can see that green icon and the green orb, that means the passive is ready, so once you use that on something and damage it, then we get some HP back, and you can see that with the animation, so that sustain is really really nice to have in the mid lane. And now we got that ultimate up, so 3 dashes, that's also going to deal damage, you can hop over walls, so you're really mobile right now, so also very hard to gank, so it's actually very rare that people try to gank Ari after those 6, unless they have some reliable CC. When you go all in with Ari, you always want to play around the E, the champ, because as I said earlier on, it will amplify the damage the opponent will be receiving from your ability, so start with that first, and then if you hit that, then you can go all in with your ultimate and your Q. And your W as well. Remember that you can also use your ultimate to reposition your Q, because it's always going to follow you, so... If you use the first part of it and then you ult to another spot, then that Q will always return to you, right? So you can also use that ultimate to reposition your um, Q, your AWP. Oh, no. 
We are just AFK pushing here and then we can try to land a charm and whenever we do so then she is going to receive a lot of damage because on the way back it is true damage so magic resistance runes items and such will not do anything at all. We just have to try to throw out the ease and then you can try to learn the dodge pattern and then you can aim it accordingly. So Aurelia is of course really OP right now and she's also running down the Garen. So can't really do much upside guys, we just have to focus on FK pushing mid and then look for kills on the Lissandra. In this matchup here against the Lissandra, because she has so much CC and it is point and click CC, then you can go for cleanse, but on Ari I really prefer to have the uh, ignite because that gives you kill pressure. Ari is a champion that relies on snowballing guys, so you want to be able to look for kills in the mid lane or in the side lane or in the jungle, doesn't matter. Just want to make sure that you are getting yourself ahead and that's much easier to do if you have ignite. Just keep FK pushing, you have really good wave clear and it's gonna be even better at level 9 because that's why you maxed out your Q. And the maxed out Q is going to one shot the backline minions, so wave clear become really good right there guys and then you can roam if you want to. Because you can show in the opponent almost instantly. That's level 9 is a big power spike for pretty much every single mage. And Ari is played like an assassin and a mage at the same time. She is a mix of both. So she can fit in both roles if she wants to. She's very good at um, picking off all extended targets, but she can also do well in the team fight if you are really good with that charm. Because she can also peel for her teammates if she has to. And that of course becomes even better when you have Everfrost. That is the main item guys. You get the arrow frost and then it's impossible to miss your E because you root people first and then use your E. Quick clear is a bit awkward right now. As soon as we get the 9 then that's going to be a lot easier. When you get camp mid, you can you of course can't really do much, but Ari still has a lot of kill pressure in a 1 vs 2 as long as you have your ultimate up and the ignite. She does have a lot of burst because of that E and then she also has true damage, so even if they have MR then you will still be able to deal a ton of damage. So Blitzcrank is roaming around as a support should be doing at this stage of the game because it really makes a huge difference um, the wards they place, um, if they even pick up a kill by roaming then that's gonna help out that teammate a lot. So we're gonna get the Everfrost first guys after tier 2 boots of course on mages tier 2 boots are so important. So you can get like Lost Chapter and then you can get tier 2 boots or you can also get the Blasting one and then tier 2 boots. It depends on what you need. If you prioritize the mobility then just get the boots early on. Since we are level 9 right now, then just watch that Q one shot the backline minions. That's gonna feel a lot better. It's gonna speed up the whole process guys so you get a lot of extra time to roam. How to make a play different parts of the map. If you can't find any kills mid, then you just gotta peace out. Look for the bot lane most of the time because they are squishies. And just wipe them out. You have your ultimate with 3 dashes so even if they flash away, when you gank them you should still be able to catch up right so. Ari is very very good at roaming so that's something you have to abuse if you're not able to get kills mid. Got another tower plate right here, so of course play for the tower plates if you can. 
If you're playing a champion with really good wave clear, then just push out the waves and then get the tower plates. That alone and the minion waves is enough gold guys, you don't always have to play around kills. So the Aurelia is really strong and we also super low HP so we can't really do much here. Having good way clear is always OP in solo queue, but now we can get the Ever Frost. Once we get that item, we just need to use the Ever Frost as the first thing in our combos, then we follow up with the E, then we can follow up with the Q and the W, that's guaranteed damage and that's good to one shot the squishy. So Ari is actually because she has two skill shots, then if you miss your abilities, then you'll be losing out on a lot of damage. That's why Aero Frost is a core component on this champ right now, because it makes you... Or it gives you guaranteed hits with the rest of your abilities, so... You're gonna get a ton of burst damage and also be reliable at the same time. So the good part is that even though Aurelia has damage reduction on her W guys, it does not work against true damage. So she might be able to reduce the damage from your other abilities, but it does not work on your Q, uh, the returning part of it, so that's also really nice this game here. And as you can see, if you hit 1E guys, then that's usually a kill. Especially if you have the ultimate up and the Everfrost, because they're gonna be CC'd for such a long time. Just gotta keep pushing for the towers here, take down the objectives and then you can also focus down the bot lane if you have to. Slowly take down the objectives, build that gold lead, get your items and then just one shot people and close out the game. As you can see people are building magic resistance so we can go straight for a white stuff after this magis right here. You get the magis if you're snowballing guys. Right now we're gonna get the avoid stuff and if they don't have MR then you can just go straight for Rabidon's death cap. But since multiple members on that team are building MR then we need that white stuff even though we had true damage on the Q. It is not enough, we also want to amplify the damage from the rest of our kit right so. They buy MR you get white stuff and if they don't then you can get the Rabidon's. That's really lucky that um, Aurelia got hit by the returning part of the Q because that's really what boosted her down but she has a ton of sustain and she's also really fed this game so she can easily 1 vs 1 anyone on our team so we really have to watch out for these fed members they have especially if they're mobile like the Aurelia because it's very hard to hit your skill shots so that's why you have to play around the Everfrost. If you ever first this up, then always use that first. We can just keep pushing mid, of course we have super fast work there. Also the easiest way to get or to hit the opponent with both parts of your Q guys is to hit them at the max range of your Q. That really um, makes it so much easier to hit it but if you use it in um, close range then it's super super easy for them to dodge it. So try to hit them at the very edge of it. And as you can see that area W damage reduction did not do anything whatsoever because true damage is OP. So the Lissandra also got, got bursted down, was probably using the chat, um, 
So that's why you don't do that in the game here guys. So we got the Herald down, so just gotta push for the mid lane. And because it is so early on in the game, even if we get that inner tower, we do not want to take the inhibitor. I have told you guys that many many times. Do not take that before 20, the 20 minute mark. Because um, if you do it before 20 minute mark, you are not able to end the game, you are also not able to get anything. And that you will spawn super minions in the middle lane, they will just keep pushing into the enemy team. So it will kill all of the enemy minions and then also give the enemy champions a lot of gold and XP. So we will be constantly losing XP and gold in the mid lane. That's why you never want to take it this early on. If you take it after 20 minutes, then you can pressure for the Baron, right? At that point, that's fine, but don't do it earlier than that. That's really, really, really awful. We almost got a fully stacked Magi's. It's gonna feel absolutely insane once we hit somebody with a combo. We won't even need the ultimate anymore because we have all the damage we need guys so we can just use that ultimate to escape with or to reposition in fights. When the team fight starts though then you want to go for the carries. Um, so in this case that would be the Senna, also the Ash. Or if um, your entire team is struggling then you want to go for the most fit member. You can also peel with your E. So if I wasn't fit right here guys, then we would just have to focus down the Aurelia. Um, because um, she's the strongest one on that team, so if we take her down, then we can take down the rest of that team. That's what we would be doing if I was not fit, but since I am fit right now, then I can just go for the carries, you know. Jump straight into the backline, assassinate somebody and then peace out. So we have full stack metas, of course we don't want to risk anything at all. Um, this Hunter does have her ultimate up. But Blitzcrank did a really nice move right there, so she actually was not able to use her ult. But if you're low HP and you have a fully stack metas or you have a lot of stacks then just peace out guys, don't stay in lane. For longer than needed, because you might risk dying and then you're gonna lose a lot of AP. We're going straight for Rapidus Death Cap, so we stay ahead of the curve here. Um, keep one shotting people, but if they have a lot of assassins, you know, like 80 assassins and such, then you get the Dark, or not Dark Seal, the Seeker Sun God. You can get that on your first or your second base, and then you can upgrade that to the Sonya Sarkas at this point. But you always want to make sure that you get the boots first and then the mythic item and then you can get the Sonya Sauglas if you want to. So you can start grouping with your team at this stage of the game here. Um, just um, so you can play Ari in different ways. If you're fed then you can do what I did early on just jump into the backline and assassinate people, but if they have a fed member, you know like a super fed Yasuo or Yone or something, then you just stay with your team, try to time all of your CC and just focus that one guy down. You get that kill on that person, then you can win the fight. They can also peel for your teammates if you need to shut down a really fed target, because you have double CC with the Aerofrost Frost and the E. And you also, if you don't have the air frost up right, then you don't have to waste your charm. You can also wait for your uh, allies to use some CC and then you can follow up with a charm. But that was the video, I hope this was helpful. As always, see you guys in the next one.